Hi there, this is Alex from GNOME Inc. And this video is to help you set up the Memristor Discovery Platform, get all the software installed, uh, get the analog discovery working, get it calibrated, uh, test in your Memristor Discovery Board uh, to make sure it's all functional, and finally to make sure that you have functioning Memristor chips. So to get started, we're going to need the Memristor Discovery version 1 board. Uh, that's available on the Gnome Inc. web store. You're also going to need the Analog Discovery from uh, Digilent, Analog Discovery 2. That's also available on the web store. You will need the wire dongle thingy that goes with the Analog Discovery. This should come with the uh, Analog Discovery kit. You're going to need the uh, micro USB cable. This also comes with the kit, but I just note that you're going to want to apply the uh, magnetic choke, or also called a ferrite choke. Uh, this will reduce high frequency noise. It's helpful in um, triggering on uh, fast pulses. And finally, in order to calibrate the analog discovery, you're going to need a voltmeter. We're going to use this to test the arbitrary waveform generators and verify that the oscilloscopes are all functioning. Okay, uh, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so now we have to install the software for Memristor Discovery and uh, the Analog Discovery, and we have to get them talking to each other. Uh, if you're skilled in this uh, martial arts of software installation, I would recommend you start simply by going to github.com gnome uh, Memristor Discovery, uh, as you can see up here in the title bar, and uh, check out the README. So everything I'm getting ready to show you is all available on the README, and uh, you know you could shut me up and just get right to work by following that. Um, otherwise, I'm going to guide you through some of the process and point out just a, a few things to keep in mind um, if you're having any issues. Uh, okay, so first we have to install the waveform software that comes with the analog discovery. So you're going to want to go to the Digilent uh, store website, store.digilentinc.com, and click on software, and you should find a link to the waveforms uh, software. You want to pick your operating system, download it, and when you do, you're going to be greeted with uh, an installation program of some sort. Um, it's really going to be dependent upon your operating system. So um, what I'm showing you here is for Mac, but it's uh, it's different for Windows. And it's uh, different for Linux. So uh, if you have something other than a Mac, look in the README, look at the instructions, and it'll guide you through. Uh, so from Digilent, we're installing installing three pieces of software. There's the, the waveform software. Uh, this is sort of a modular um, general software for controlling the analog discovery. It's pretty cool. You should check it out. I'm impressed. Uh, then there's also an FTDI driver that's needed to get the analog discovery to talk to your computer. And finally, there's an SDK. Uh, we need the SDK in order to interact with um, the Memristor discovery software, which is in Java. Uh, one thing to note is that uh, if you get everything installed, booted up, and the um, the waveforms is software is not recognizing the analog discovery, that's likely due to the fact you haven't restarted your computer. And when you do, the FTDI driver is going to take effect. Um, and if it doesn't, then maybe you did install the FTDI driver. Uh, finally, we're going to install the Memristor discovery software itself. Uh, it's a Java program, so first thing that you have to do if you don't already have it on your system is install Java. Uh, in the README file, there is uh, different ways of doing it depending on your operating system, so it'll guide you through that. You can, you can just read that here. Um, now, once you've installed Java, you're going to want to go to the releases pages um, in Memristor Discovery on our GitHub. Uh, project, and it'll give you the latest release. So you're going to want to click on the latest jar release, and let's save that to the desktop. I've already downloaded it because I've done this before, but it will show up here. Uh, okay, so we have downloaded the waveform software. We have downloaded the SDK. We've downloaded the FTDI driver. We've installed all these things. We've installed Java. Um, and we've downloaded the Memristor Discovery jar. Um, we are now ready to um, plug the system in, boot it up, and get started on calibration. 
So next up, we need to plug in the analog discovery, make sure the waveform software is working and that we can control it. Um, we're going to test both arbitrary waveform generators and oscilloscopes. So if you can't get past this step, uh, you're going to want to go back and check to make sure your installation was successful. Okay, so we're going to open up the waveform software. And uh, what I want you to do is go to the wave generator. So click on wave gen and we're going to configure wave generator 1 to be a sine wave, so click run, get that going. Okay, we're going to go back and we're going to actually do uh, another wave generator, um, wave generator 2, and we're going to set that to a square wave just to um, differentiate it whenever we measure. So we're going to click run, so right now the waveform generator is going. We're going to go back to our scope and uh, get that going. Okay, so our scope is currently reading nothing, which makes sense because nothing is connected. Now you're going to want to use this dongle provided by Digilent and uh, get your Memristor Discovery Board. You'll notice there's some pins here on the bottom and uh, these are useful in situations like this. Um, so what we're going to do is hook up Arbitrary Waveform Generator 1 to Oscilloscope 1 and Waveform Generator 2 to Oscilloscope 2 and see uh, if we have a functioning device. Okay, so these orange wires are oscilloscope channel uh, one. We're going to hook those there. These blue wires are oscilloscope channel two. The stripe indicates the negative or ground connection. So we're going to get that one there, that one there. Finally, we have the waveform generators, which are these yellow. Um, waveform generator 1 is solid yellow, whereas the stripe is waveform generator 2. So we're going to hook that waveform generator 1 to there and waveform generator 2 to there. Okay, so it looks like we have ourselves um, a device. It's functional. We're measuring um, the square wave on channel 2 and we're measuring the um, sine wave on channel 1. Notice uh, this interesting uh, RC effect <coughs> right here. Um, so we have a device and uh, everything works. So if you hook this up and you don't get this result, uh, keep fiddling with it until you do. Um, actually play around with the waveform software, it's pretty cool. Um, so now we have to calibrate the device. Uh, so get your voltmeter ready, and I will uh, see you in the next section. So uh, open up waveforms. Uh, make sure you have your voltmeter handy and your Memristor Discovery Board, as well as the, uh, the dongle wire thingy, I don't know what it's called, and your analog discovery. Uh, okay, so within waveforms, you're going to want to go to Settings, Device Manager, and make sure you have your device here selected by the serial number. It should automatically select it for you. Uh, and then click Calibrate. And it's going to give you a list of things that you need to calibrate. Uh, we're going to go through uh, Waveform Generator 1, uh, Low Gain. Um, you're going to want to do the Low Gain for Waveform Generator 1, Waveform Generator 2, and then test the oscilloscope. The positive and negative supply is really not all that important. Um, so long as uh, it's able to put out about 5 volts, the Memristor Discovery Board is going to be just fine. Uh, okay, so let's get started with Waveform Generator 1. And what it's going to do is put a series of voltages. You're going to measure them with the scope and see if everything is congruent. Um, enter in the offset and then it should store that uh, on board the analog discovery itself. Uh, okay, so we have our voltmeter, we have our um, Memristor Discovery, and we're going to use these these pins here as a as a nice place to uh, attach the wires from our dongle. Okay, so it, asking us to uh, measure the voltage on Wave Gen One and enter the field below. Okay, so Wave Gen One is this yellow wire. So we're going to put Wave Gen One over here, and this is in reference to ground. So we'll put that here. And we're going to measure the voltage across those two. So, like so. 
we're at 2.2, 2.1 millivolts. So we enter that here. Go to the next. And it's going to ask us again, and we just repeat this process. So I'll try to speed this up, but uh, this is really all we have to do. Okay, so we have uh, calibrated waveform generator one. Uh, everything was congruent. You notice towards the end, it all started to dial itself in. Uh, go ahead and do this for waveform generator two, and uh, then check out the oscilloscope. When you're done with all of this, just hit apply. Uh, do you want to apply the calibration changes? Yes, we do. Um, at that moment, it's being written into the analog discovery, and uh, we're good to go. So close on out of that and your device is calibrated. So now we can move on to uh, booting up the Memristor Discovery software and uh, taking our first measurement on a GNOME Memristor. Okay, so we are almost done, I promise. Uh, we've tested the analog discovery. Uh, we've tested uh, the, the way from generators work. We've calibrated the thing. Um, so now just plug your Memristor Discovery into the Analog Discovery and we're going to boot up the Memristor Discovery software. So we've previously downloaded uh, that jar um, onto any directory and uh, we're going to open up the, the terminal and we're going to want to <coughs> go into that directory and we're going to launch it by typing java-jar specify the jar, and then uh, for, this is the V1 board, so we're going to give it the V1 flag. And um, in order to test that we have a functional board and that all our equipment is good, we want to hit specify the test flag. Okay, so Java, jar, memristor discovery, V1, test, and get that going. And that's going to launch uh, the memristor discovery software. And it's going to uh, boot into the board check experiment. So if we go up here to experiments, uh, we have them all listed out here. This uh, is modular software. You can make your own experiments. Um, and the very first thing that you have to do is to test that your equipment is functional and working as expected. Because if it's not, it doesn't matter what software you write, uh, it won't work. So we're going to test our board, make sure everything's good and within spec. And uh, when it is, then we can move on to our experiments. Okay, so we're in the board check experiment. Uh, notice there are four buttons here. One clears this terminal and then the other ones test for certain things. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to test is the onboard uh, one for muxes. Uh, these, these guys right here. Uh, the function of those is to route the waveform generators and oscilloscope to one of four different locations on the chip. The, the A node, the B node, the Y node, and um, one of the external pins. Uh, so the way that we do that, uh, the board is going to just route the waveform generator one place and it's going to route the oscilloscope to the same place. It's going to apply voltage, see if it matches, and it's going to move on in various combinations. Okay, so everything is plugged in. Uh, we're going to hit the MUX test and boom, it's done. Uh, we notice that all the different routes um, are within spec. You know, if this is more than about 2%, then you're going to want to calibrate uh, your analog discovery. <coughs> okay, so our MUXs work. Next, we want to test the bilateral switches uh, here on the side. Now, these are used to selectively couple uh, memristors uh, on from the memristor chips to our driver circuitry. And we're going to test that by putting in a dummy chip here, which has... Uh, five kilo ohm resistors uh, between each of the terminals. Uh, I, you know, I soldered this up um, by just you know, taking some old headers. Uh, I also have another blank here that I just uh, put into a, a, you know, a cheap dip socket. Um, it's not necessary that you, you make one of these, um, but the, the test itself is just testing to see that there is a five kilo ohm resistor between each one of the terminals. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna put that guy in there like that. 
I'm um, going to make note of the precision resistor that you have in the second shunt here. Make sure that the jumper is configured as shown. Um, what's going to happen, uh, it's going to apply a voltage across the series of you know, one of these resistors um, selected by the switches um, uh, in series with the precision resistor here to ground. It's then going to measure the voltage drop. It's going to um, figure out what the current is. And with that, it can figure out what the resistance of this uh, resistor is. It's going to move through every single one, and if it's all um, roughly equal to 5 kilo ohms, then it passes the test. Uh, so we put that in place. Uh, we note that this is 15 kilo ohms. Make sure that in your preferences it specifies 15 kilo ohms. And uh, we're going to hit the, the test. It's going to go through every single one of those. And uh, you know, it, um, it measured uh, all of those resistances as being approximately 5 kilo ohms. Uh, so we have muxes, we have bilateral switches, they've both passed, and finally, take your GNOME memristor chip, um, put that in the socket, and uh, we can test that. So there's this test, the MIM inline chip test, uh, tests specifically for our discrete uh, devices where there's one memristor between um, each opposing pin on the dip socket. Uh, there are you know, other chips out there, and as we add them, we will add tests to um, the board check uh, experiment here. Uh, so we have that in there, and we're going to uh, click the MIM inline uh, chip test. Uh, now it's going through, and uh, first it measures the resistance with all the switches off. Make sure that that's, that's very high resistance, as it should be. And then it proceeds through all of the different devices, testing to see what the resistance is, then writing the device to a highly conductive state, testing the resistance, and then erasing it, and doing that, seeing if all the transitions match. Um, and if it doesn't, if it fails, it tells you, you know, why it failed. Uh, so what we see here is that device um, 6 uh, has failed, and it says uh, Q2 is less than the minimum. So the, the difference between the conductive and non-conductive state whenever it went from write to erase on that second cycle wasn't good enough, so it failed. Um, and as a consequence of that, it's been categorized as a Tier 2 chip. Uh, so on our web store, if you see Tier 1, Tier 2, burn and learn, and you're wondering how we make that determination, uh, it's right here. We plug the chip in, we hit that button, and we do what it tells us. Uh, if you'd like more information about the tests that this thing is actually performing, go to Window Help, and it'll bring up the Help menu. Uh, you can do this for any of the experiments. Uh, so hopefully this, uh, this all worked for you, and you have a functioning setup. You have Memristor Discovery talking to Analog Discovery. You have working Memristors. And now we can get started, and we can actually start experimenting with Gnome Memristors.